homes. My home is a prison? My home is a prison? My home is a prison? But we've surrounded ourselves with comfortable cushions and slightly better than motel art, the homes we built for ourselves are essentially prisons. As warden, we sit at the kitchen table to pay the rent, cover repairs, taxes, bills, and insurance. We also keep up with the regular maintenance of the house so our neighbors don't think poorly of us, and maybe even add something new so they can envy us just a little. And while the roof over our head provides comfort from the storms and the envy of our neighbors makes us feel like we're living a life of some joy, the comfort and happiness as we all know, is temporary. During the day, we are the masters of our lives, wearing our warden's hats and standing upright in public with pride. But when we get home, we all slouch into the reality that we are prisoners of rent, repairs, taxes, bills, and insurance. Prisoners to our jobs, our schools, and the roles we've invented for ourselves, sometimes without even knowing it. Let's consider something that I think is really important. That's how much free time you have to do things that you actually enjoy. For the average American, a 40-hour work week would be a dream because many of us work multiple jobs and far more hours than that. But for argument's sake, let's say that a 40-hour work week is normal. With just 160 68 hours each week to live, we give roughly a quarter of our time to our employers. So we're down to 128 hours to live for ourselves. Now let's factor in the average commute time of about a half hour each way. That's five hours a week in traffic. We're down to 123 hours. Roughly 56 hours are needed just for sleep, which gives us 67 hours to enjoy ourselves. But we have to spend time getting ready each day. We go shopping for groceries once or twice a week. We do long laundry, we prepare meals daily, and then we go back to the kitchen table to pay rent, cover repairs, taxes, bills, and insurance. My home is a prison. And only then do we remember about that regular maintenance we were supposed to keep up with. And if we can do all that within 27 hours, then we officially have exactly as much time to enjoy ourselves as we spend working each week. And if you're like me, then half of that free time is spent on Sunday, dreading having to go back into work on Monday. And that's the moment that we realize our homes are prisons. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong, owning a home has allowed a lot of people to pass on their generational wealth onto their kids when they might not have been otherwise able to. I also know that owning a home gives a lot of people a sense of pride over their accomplishments, a sense of community in their neighborhood, and internalized gratitude for their own lifestyle. I applaud that, and I don't mean to denigrate it in any way, it's just that I know for a lot of us, our house really does become a prison. And that's because we're brought up to believe that there's only one way to fit into society. You know, we have to conform to what everyone else is doing to be happy, right? We buy shiny things and nice clothes to wear, we lease fancy cars, we take out mortgages on big homes, and then we fill them wall to wall with stuff we really don't ever use. And all the while, we never really stop to think that every new watch, every new blouse, car, and kitchen remodeling are all laying the brickwork for our own prisons. And that's because money is our freedom. The fact is our income is far less important than how we balance that income against our outgo. So let's take this as an example. If someone is making $4,000 a month, but their taxes take out a quarter of it, their car lease takes out another 500, the taxes, repairs, bills, mortgage, and insurance eats up another 1500, that person now just has $1,000 per month for their food, cell phone, entertainment, medical costs, and anything unexpected that may come up along the way. And yes, of course, I no, everyone still needs a place to sleep, even nomads. But rent is wildly inexpensive in other countries compared to the United States. And of course, nomads who remain in the United States have the option to live in an RV, and they can get rid of rent all together. So between the elimination of car leases and housing costs, our hypothetical person has already saved two-thirds of their post-tax income. So all of a sudden, instead of that person relying on that constant influx of cash just to keep themselves above water, now all that money goes into their pocket since they're living nomadically and no longer in their prison. And when you think about it like that, you might think, yeah, maybe our homes are prisons that we're paying thousands of dollars a month 
to maintain. Full-time travel is an escape from the prisons that we're taught to build our entire lives. Living as a nomad is a survival tactic. Yes, of course, it's a lot more fun than waking up to an alarm clock and going to work to check into a job like a robot, but that's a part of the survival aspect. It reduces your stress and it reduces the unhappiness in your life along with your costs. Sometimes I think that people don't realize how important our daily lives truly are. Think about this, if we're lucky to live 100 years, you only get 36,500 days to exist. Now, I'm 33 years old, so I've already blown through over 12,000 of those days. Oh my god, I need to get outside. I think the final point that I should probably make is that living as a nomad is less expensive than owning a home, and it gives us more freedom on a daily basis. That's because it's expensive to operate a prison and torture to live inside one.